guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Y'all, today we are going to make something so beautiful that it is destined to be a keepsake. Stay tuned. what we are going to be making. I am not going to open it yet because I want to open it when I have the camera overhead so that you can get a really good view of what it is that I'm making. But I am using some exquisite Anna Griffin die cuts to make this project. And when you see it, you are going to fall in love with it. And as I always say on the channel, any season, any reason, any gender, this is a perfect example of that because once I show you what I've done on the inside, you're going to know that you can do this for Christmas, Thanksgiving, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, whatever it is you want to celebrate. This is going to give you a great idea of how to create that memorable keepsake piece. So y'all know what time it is. It is time to get started. So what I'm attempting to do is to create a Victorian style Easter card. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen Victorian Easter cards, but they were really storytelling cards. The cards would have somewhat of a theme to them and they would have sort of a rich, elaborate look to them. And that's what I'm trying to recreate today. So what I'm attempting to recreate is a vintage Easter card, but I'm doing it book style because I really want this to be something that you can set out and look at if you want. But on the outside, I have used some of the beautiful Anna Griffin die cuts from her vintage Easter collection of die cuts. And then when I open it up on the inside, you can see just how gorgeous this is. So on this side, you can see that we have our scene with our bunnies and then we have some Easter clover and some florals. And here I have a pocket where I created a place where you can write your Easter greeting to the person that you're giving this to. But this is just so beautiful, y'all. I just love it. And looking at it here, I think whoever would get this would be thrilled to get it. So on this side, I built another scene. So we have our Easter bunny with his egg and he's got his paint set and he's painting his Easter egg. And then we have some more of that Easter clover and I tucked in a little Easter chick, popped it up with the happy Easter die cut from Anna Griffin. And all of this is from that Anna Griffin Easter collection. Now these two pieces here are from a Bow Bunny paper pack. So all I did was took those two pieces and antique them just a little bit and put them down and then I built my scene on top of that. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to recreate a look and come up with something absolutely gorgeous. And I think that whoever you give this to, they are going to fall in love with it and you're going to fall in love with it while you're making it. So in this video, we are going to focus on just making this beautiful, Victorian card. And then in a follow-up video, we're going to make a box to put this in. And of course the box has to be equally as gorgeous if it's going to hold something as beautiful as this. So here is what we're going to need to construct the body of our project. I have two pieces of chipboard that measure six by seven. I have one piece of chipboard that measures one by seven. I have two pieces of beautiful paper, and this is just some regular thin decorative paper. You can use your cardstock, whatever it is you want to use. I just happen to like this print, so I'm going with this. And I have two pieces that measure eight and a half by nine. Then I have a piece that measures six and three quarters by eight and a half. And then I have a second piece that measures six and three quarters by five. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take some tape and we are going to join our two pieces we're going to join our two pieces that measure nine by eight and we are going to join them by placing our tape along the eight inch side. So then I'll use my finger blade to remove that tape backer. I'll take my second sheet and basically what I'm going to do is place it down on top of that first sheet. So then I want to take my spine piece and I'm going to make sure that when I take that spine where I join the two pieces of paper together, I want that seam to run right up the middle of that spine. So I am going to take this 
and just kind of find where that seam is and then I'll place this down. Then I'll take my pieces that measure six by seven and I'm going to place them down and I'm going to give myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And I'll do the same thing over here. So we're going to take this piece, place it down, and we're giving ourselves about an eighth of an inch in spacing. So I am going to trim away some of my excess, and the reason why I always use more paper than I need when I'm joining two pieces together is because I always want to make sure that the seam is falling on the back side of my project and hopefully not on one of my panels. Now I'm going to take our scoring tool or bone fold or whatever you have, press it against your chipboard, and then just drive it into the paper. And basically we are creating a nice score that if you have a paper that has a tendency to crack, this might help to loosen those fibers and reduce the severity of the cracking. It won't eliminate it, but it might help to reduce it. So then we can take this and just sort of fold it so that we can get our paper used to being folded. Then I'm going to take my finger blade and we're going to do a miter. And by miter, what I mean is when you fold this way and you fold this way, you're going to have an intersection and you'll be able to see your line and your line is here and your line is like that and you can just cut following that line or you can cut through that line. But all you're doing is making sure that when you fold over, you have those edges covered. So I'll do the same thing here. Same thing here. And the same thing here. So if you have any place where you think you have cut too short, just take one of those pieces that you cut out, take some glue, take this piece and just put it in the corner to help cover any gaps you might have. And that is not my original idea. That idea was actually shared with me by a subscriber. So. It might help some of you if you run into that issue. So I'm going to take my tape and lay down my tape on all four sides. Then I'm going to use my big old spatula to go around the ends and I'll peel away my tape. And now I'll take my fold over pieces and just get those laid down. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of glue, place that glue right here in the corners because when I fold it over, I covered some of the tape. So I want to make sure I have full coverage. And that's the reason why I'm putting that glue. Let's do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take this piece, fold it over. I'll come back in with my big old spatula to make sure I have everything nice and stuck. So now we have the jacket of our piece covered on the outside. I am going to take my tape and just lay down some tape on the inside and my goal is to cover the chipboard. So I'm not focused on covering the paper. I really just want to get the chipboard covered. So I'm going to place a piece right here. And then I'll 
slice a piece right there. Get that nice and stuck. Now I'm going to bring in my two pieces and I have a piece that measures six and three quarters by eight and a half. That's the one I'll put down first. And then I have a piece that measures six and three quarters by five and I'll place that one down second. So I want to make sure that when I place it, I'm not placing this piece so that it hits the spine. So that's why we have those measurements like that because I want to make sure that we have it nice and neat on one side so that we don't have that bubbling at the spine when you join two pieces like that. So now what I am going to do is I am going to take some tape and I am going to place my tape along the edges of all of my pieces. You can actually do this with glue if you want. I am using my tape because it's what happens to be handy at this moment, but you can certainly go around your edges with glue if you don't want to use the tape. And as you guys know, I use Reptile Adhesive. It is my favorite. All right, guys, so once we have our liner pieces covered, we can go ahead and peel away the tape backers from the chipboard jacket. I have already removed the tape from the back of my liner piece and I am going to take this liner and place it down like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and just smooth that out. Use my big old spatula to go in and get my spines nicely defined. And that is how your piece is going to look right now. Then I'm going to take that piece that measures six and three quarters by five, remove the backer sheet from the tape that I placed along the edges. And then we're going to put this piece down. So I'll bring it to me. And I am going to take this piece, try to match it at the top, and we'll place it down just like that. So we have this beautiful jacket for the wonderful vintage Easter card that we are going to start building. All right, guys, so here's a quick look at some of the die cuts that I'm going to be using. And these die cuts are from the Anna Griffin Vintage Bunny die cuts, and they are truly spectacular. So I am going to just give you a quick look so that you can see, and you get two of each of the pages that I'm showing you, and each one of these is a punch out die cut. And you can see that I've already punched out some, but look at the bunnies and the chicks that you get. I mean, this is really a great way to build a scene, and you can see I've used a lot of these already. And then you get the floral pages, you get two pages of greetings and you have from me to you hello springtime spring blessings happy easter happy birthday in case your birthday falls on easter just a note in case you want to send these to someone just to let them know you're thinking about them and then we have some more of the pages with the chicks and the bunnies and then we have these gold pieces that are on there as well you've got gold carrots clover flowers bunnies just so beautiful and then this page of bunnies is just exquisite and then we have more floral wreaths that we can use to build scenes. Then we have our basket scenes and you can see that we have bows included. So you have a way that you can make an entire scene on your project with just these die cuts. And then we have this beautiful page of bunnies, more bunnies and flowers, and a fun page of chicks with Easter eggs and it looks like it might be champagne. I don't know, but they are gorgeous. So those are just some of the fun die cuts that you'll get in this Anna Griffin Vintage Bunny die cuts. Now I got mine when she um, debuted them on HSN last month in February. 
I don't know if they're on our website or not. I know that on HSN they sold out. But if you can find these, they're worth it. And you get 314 pieces along with the foam pop dots that I have been using like crazy. This was truly worth the money. I think it was on HSN, it might have been $44.99 or $49.99, but at 50 bucks to get 314 pieces that look like this when you break it down by piece, the cost is pennies. So I am going to walk you guys through of how I'm going to build my scene. And I have these pieces that came from a Bow Bunny pack that I had been working with and I had cut them out a long time ago, but never really used them. So we're going to use some of these on this project. And I'll walk you guys through my thought process when I'm doing something like this. So I like having that old library card look. I don't know why, I just do. So I'm going to use that. Then I want to find another one of these that I can use to really help build my scene. And let's just test out this one. So if we put that in like that, I think I'm gonna go with that. So here's how I start doing it. I'll place these two pieces down because they're going to be my anchor pieces. Then I am going to start building my scene on top of that. So I know that I'll probably want this bunny right here. Then I'm going to have this greenery going across the bottom. I'm going to pull in a flower at the top just to have that interest. Then I have this little fellow here that I think I'm going to put there. And I have a little bunny that I'm just going to pop up right there. And then I'll take my Easter wishes and put it right there at the bottom. So here's what I do whenever I'm building a scene and I want to lay pieces down and I want to remember how I want them to go. I am simply going to use the camera on my phone to take a picture and then I'll have that picture sitting out and that'll show me exactly how I want things to be placed. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want everything to not be so clean on this. So I am going to take some of my Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is the Walnut Stain. Then I'm going to take my little dauber that I create using a Dollar Tree sponge and a bull nose clip. And I am just going to go around the edges and give every piece that I'm going to be using just more of a dirty look. And I know that sounds horrible when I say it out loud, but I really don't want this to have that bright newness to it. I want this to look like somebody was going through an old chest and they came across this and it was aged just a little bit, but it was still gorgeous. So I'm just putting a little bit of age on my pieces. And I'm going to put it on everything. So I am just going to get that nice and dirty. I'm going to put it on this. So I am just making sure that I get some of this ink all over the place. And like I said, I'm doing everything. Also going to do the edges of this. And 
And if you guys hear a clicking noise in the background, there's not anything wrong with your system or your hearing. It is my little puppy Loki in the background playing. And so now that I have all of my pieces aged the way that I want them, I am going to bring my photograph in. And I know that this piece goes like that. So I'm going to place this piece down with some glue. Try to get it sort of where I have it in the photograph. Then I'm going to take this piece, place it down with some glue. And we're going to place that right there. Then we'll take this piece and go ahead and put it down right there. So all of the pieces that I'm putting here at the top, I'm pretty much laying them flat and then I'll build up dimension as I go to the bottom. So then I can take this piece, I'm going to add my glue to the back take this piece and place it right there. And now we'll start adding our dimensions. So I'm going to bring in my dots and I'm going to place some dots on the back of my bunny. And I'm not going to be stingy with my dots because I don't want this coming up and I also want it to have some really good dimension. I want to take one and see if I can work one in right there. I'm going to press down to make sure those are nice and stuck and then I can peel away the backs. And so in following my photograph, I have my bunny, oh, like so. So I'm just going to put him down and you can see that he has a little bit of elevation to him because you might be able to see a little shadow activity. So I'm going to take this piece and we're going to place it down using pop dots as well. So I am going to take my dots, put those dots down. And then I'll take this piece and I am just going to put it down just like that. Then I'm going to take this little fella here, put a few dots. And we're going to take him and I had him right over here towards the edge. So I'm going to put him there. And now I need to grab my bunny, add a couple of dots to that bunny. And then my bunny is right here. I think I'm going to take him and just have him down a little bit. And you can see that we have this beautiful scene, but we do want to take this piece that says sending Easter wishes and I'm going to place it right there and I'm also going to place it using my pop dots. So I'm going to place one here and we'll place one here and then I'll place one in the middle. And now we can take this and I'm going to try to match it up to where I had it. And isn't that a pretty scene? And this would be fabulous to look at 
if you happen to receive it as Easter greetings, this would be perfect. So now we're going to work on this side. And what I'm going to do is I am going to bring in some of the scrap pieces that I had left over when I trimmed down the outer jacket. I am going to trim my piece that is five and three quarters of an inch. And this is just going to create a little pocket for me. So I am going to take my finger blade and I'm just going to freehand my pocket because I'm just going to cut on the diagonal, just like that. And then I'll place that down and I'm going to place it down using some glue. So when I place it down, I'm just going to place glue on this side and then the long side at the bottom. And I'll place it just like that. And I'm just going to go over this with my spatula to make sure I have everything nice and stuck. And of course, I want to build a little scene over here as well. So I am going to take some of these and just put them down. But this time I'm just going to keep it simple. It's going to be a large bunny, baby bunny, and a basket of eggs. So all I'm going to do again is I am going to put a little bit of dirtiness on all of these. So I am just going to add some stain to my little foam dauber here. And just kind of dirty that a little bit. And then again, I am going to be popping these up with dots. So I'm going to go ahead and add the dots to all of these and I'll be right back. All right, so I have added my dots to the back. I am just going to take this little guy here and I'm going to place him right there. And then I have my little basket of eggs, place it right there. Take my last little bunny and just pop him so that he's following the leader. So then I have a piece of white cardstock that measures five by six that I'm going to put in this pocket. But before I do, I am going to just dirty it up just a little bit. I am just going to go along my edges. going to do the back side as well because you might want to write a lengthy note. And then I think I'm just going to take this little yellow flower, add some glue to the back, and then I'm going to place it right there at the top. So then I'm going to take this little Easter egg and place it on the back. of this piece and I'm just going to put it at the bottom. And now we can take this and tuck it in. And so now we have a beautiful place to write our Easter greetings. Isn't that pretty? And look at how gorgeous that is. And when they receive it, they could actually set it out on the mantle like this because it is a showpiece. And so I am going to keep the front on this very, very simple because I don't want to take away from that background. And I definitely don't want to take away from this beautiful, beautiful bunny. So I am going to take my glue. I could actually run this through my Xyron if I wanted to, but my glue just happens to be right here. And I am just going to place my glue all over the back now we can take this piece and we're going to place it just like that. I'm going to open this, use my big old spatula to get it stuck. 
Then I'm going to take this one that says somebody loves you, dirty it just a little bit. And we're going to place it down. So I am going to use some glue and this time I'm just going to place some glue right there on those two ends so that when I put this down I can kind of smush it to give it just a little bit of elevation as if I had a pop dot but I don't. So what do you guys think? Is this something that you would enjoy doing? Do you think that you'll be making some of these? If so, leave me a comment below because I would love to know if you plan on making some of these and if you do please post those pictures to instagram using the hashtag posh paper lady inspired and if you're a member of my monthly members club don't forget post those pictures on facebook because we would love to see your take on this card so i am going to bring in that first one so that you can see how gorgeous this pair is and then when you open them you can see all of this goodness on the inside these are just spectacular me showing them on camera does not do them justice i am absolutely in love with these and i think that you will be too if you make them so i hope that you guys have thoroughly enjoyed this project if you have please hit the like button and if you are not a subscriber to my channel i would love to have you join this awesome online crafting family you guys as always please be safe be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.